I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Nicaragua. So you're decided you're going to come to Nicaragua. You're doing a scouting trip. You're thinking about the possibility, maybe soon, maybe sometime in the future, of relocating to Nicaragua and becoming an expat. Maybe you're coming to live for six months. Maybe you're coming to live for six years, and maybe you're coming to make a permanent life here. Hey, that's fantastic, and we want you to come and be successful. But more importantly, we want you to come and make a really good determination and know what Nicaragua is really like. We don't want you to come down, get misled, and make a mistake mistake because the worst thing is coming to Nicaragua and then feeling you have to leave. Much better to find out if you like or don't like it ahead of time. But to do that, we have to be careful that the evaluation that you do is a proper one. So what do you need to avoid to make sure you're getting a tourist uh, vacation idea out of the way and focus on actual Nicaragua living? Let's get to that right after the bump. When you're coming down to evaluate Nicaragua, it's gonna be really easy to get tempted to go do all the touristy things because every website is gonna direct you to them. It's what's interesting. Why would you come to Nicaragua and not spend your time doing fun, exciting things? Because that's what you do when you go to a new place. Well, because those aren't things you would be doing in your everyday life when you live here. And if they are things you want to do and you're thinking about moving here, then do them once you've moved and have unlimited time and they're super cheap and convenient. And you can do them when they're not busy and in with lines and such. It's way better to do it later, but it's a very just human nature to come down, sense that there's all these fun things to do and spend your time uh, volcano boarding, going to the islands, going to big parties, instead of experimenting to see what everyday Nicaraguan life would be like. Now we have a series of expat and relocation skills that we have as a separate playlist uh, that we have been coming out with. And one of those talks about in the general sense, how you need to avoid doing touristy things when evaluating a country. This is kind of our Nicaraguan practicum to go along with that video. We're going to talk about actual things you want to avoid. Of course, there's obvious things that make them up, but we want to avoid uh, sp very specific tourist things and focus on relocation skills so that your time spent, and hopefully it's a bit of time. Some people come down for a week, and that's really not very much. Some people say give get your visa limit, stay for three or six months if you can, and that's obviously best case scenario. Give it lots of time. Uh, consider moving and just being prepared to move back if that's what you need to do right there. Everybody has a different way of testing the waters, but you want to make sure that you're doing a good evaluation before you make a move that can't be reversed. <clears throat> it can't be reversed easily. So let's start with an important preface. When we're talking about Nicaragua as a country, we have one thing, that is a legal jurisdiction. When we're talking about Nicaragua as a culture, it is a different one. And most people looking at Nicaragua have a natural affinity to kind of figure out where the Nicaraguan cultural zone is, although they don't know why, simply because it's where the population is and it's where all the historic things have happened. It is where uh, all the, the activities are focused, but there are other regions of Nicaragua. So when we're talking about checking out Nicaragua what Nicaraguan culture, Nicaraguan food, all the things that we expect to have happen in Nicaragua a certain way, that's in the Nicaraguan cultural zone, which is nearly where all the population lives, but there are some exceptions. The two autonomous zones on the Caribbean coast, they speak a different language, they have a different uh, culinary experience, a different income level, different working environments. There's just a million things that are different out there. You're gonna feel like you're in a completely different country. In fact, you're essentially gonna feel like you're in Belize. And the Corn Islands are out in the Caribbean and are basically just expat tourist spots. They're absolutely fine. It's neat that Nicaragua has them, but in no way is living there part of living in Nicaragua. So that's important to understand. When we're talking about Nicaragua, we're talking about the area essentially from Rivas to Chinandega and east out to the edges of the autonomous zones. There are bits of Nicaraguan culture beyond that, but this is its homeland, and that is what we really are referring to as Nicaragua, and that is the area that was originally Nicaragua when the, uh, the state was formed, and then over time it accumulated other zones. So what we need to first do is look at things you want to avoid. Now, we don't want to avoid them like they're bad. We just want to avoid them because they're not going to give you an honest experience about Nicaragua, either because they're touristy or they're just not in the cultural zone. Now, Keep this in mind, you may be interested in living outside the cultural zone. If you're really interested in a Belize style experience that's inside the Nicaraguan polity, that's fine. That's actually really cool. You got two autonomous zones with huge amounts of area that you could go explore. Mostly you're gonna launch from either Puerto Cabeza in the north or Bluefields in the 
south, it's kind of the middle actually, and uh, and go from there, right? Those regions are going to be interesting um, and, and, you know, potentially that's something you might be interested in, but it's very important to understand that is not like coming to, to Nicaragua. It would be kind of like going to the United States and saying, I'm really interested in the United States. I've heard about the U.S., I heard about its culture, I heard about its culinary experience, I heard about all these things, and then coming to the U.S. and saying, okay, uh, and I get a lot of people do this here, right? Do the equivalent. They come and then they say, well, I'm only interested in Puerto Rico. And it's like, okay, like from a political standpoint, Puerto Rico is 100% American, absolutely in every sense. But culturally, it's two different places. And like, Puerto Rico is considered to be part of Latin America broadly, and the U.S. is not, as an example. Uh, Spanish is the official language in Puerto Rico. English is the lingua franca uh, I'm sorry, uh, in, in the United States. It's completely, completely different places in so many ways. They have very little shared history until recent times. So many people, when they're coming to Nicaragua, they'll see like this show, for example, where we live in cultural Nicaragua, and then they'll immediately jump to, I'm really interested in the autonomous zones. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Go invest in the autonomous zones. In no way do I want to disparage that as an idea. They need expats far more than we do, in fact. So you could make a big difference out there and help everybody. But be aware that it's like seeing a show about the United States and saying, okay, I saw the show about the U.S. and it made me interested in Puerto Rico. If you're going to be interested in Puerto Rico, chances are you're going to see a show in Puerto Rico. They're very different places. So just be aware of that, right? As long as you're consciously coming down and saying, look, I'm really interested in these two places and I know they're two completely different places, then by all means, evaluate both, but evaluate them, I would say, separately because it's really as if it's two separate places. Of course, it's nice that we're becoming more connected. The highways have now connected us. They're going to be integrating more and more, but that's an ongoing thing. And for those of you who are still looking, if you're liking the things you see here, you might still like the things over there, but they're going to be very different. And if you like what's there, chances are you're not, not going to like what's here, uh, just because it's two such different places uh, that trying to merge them and act like they're a single place will be confusing. Okay, so let's talk about tourist zones that are just going to be misleading. These are misleading not because they're not part of Nicaragua, but because they, they're they just full of tourists. And anywhere in the world that you go to that's full of tourists is not going to be indicative of what the life is like in that place. You can say this anywhere. If you're going to uh, the Latin Quarter in Paris, if you're going to uh, uh, Lago Atitlan in Guatemala, if you're going to Antigua in Guatemala, if you're going to Las Vegas in the United States, it's really easy with these examples to say, oh, I understand. These are not how normal people live. Americans do not live with a big gambling stretch typically. But if you're really interested in that bizarre Las Vegas lifestyle, of course, you have the option of living there. That's a totally fine thing to want, but you need to be aware that that is a very specific evaluation and that when we're showing the Nicaragua on this show that we're not showing those touristy areas under normal circumstances so that would be a very different thing. Now the first one we're going to mention and all of these have their little caveats. The first one is San Juan del Sur. This is a small village very far to the southwest but it's nearly all expats. So this one is important to understand because it's essentially a large enclave and life there is very different but it is legitimately a place where you could live and loads and loads of you probably will want to at least check it out if not actually live there. So if you have not been able to rule it out by watching the show or doing other research and determining that it's cost or lifestyle or location just aren't right for you, then you may need to consider it. But it's very important to understand that it is essentially an enclave and it is basically a tourist zone. So if, and by, I mean, it is completely tourist zone. If you're going to go there, you're going to be living a tourist lifestyle almost guaranteed. There's no real way to escape it. If that's something you like, then that is absolutely fine. When I was first moving back to Nicaragua, when we were making the decision to permanently come back here after having lived here previously, we strongly considered San Juan del Sur. So I totally understand why people would be looking at it. There's a lot of draw down there. It can make a lot of sense, but it is a completely different lifestyle. You have different food, different music, different, uh, uh, you know, nightlife. Everything about it is different because it's essentially an enclave. And so you're getting this uh, culture all of its own in this very small area. So if it's something you want to consider, then consider it. But don't consider it as an evaluation of Nicaragua, much like the autonomous zones consider it an evaluation of something akin to Nicaragua that's located within the political borders. So evaluate it on its own, essentially. Similarly, if you want to evaluate living on the island of Ometepe, it is, Ometepe is you know, technically and legally part of Nicaragua, but culturally, historically, 
functionally it is a completely owned place. It's an island. It is only accessible by ferry. So things like the quiet nightlife and the complete in inaccessibility for 12 hours a day is something very unique to Ometepe. Uh, it has a very large expat and hippie community. It is full of hippie communes for real. And so this creates a very, very different lifestyle and, and restaurant and food supply and just everything. All of life is colored by this. There aren't very many cars on the island. It's just a very different place. So if you are really interested in isolated island living and you're willing to honestly consider living in a small village or out in the country on a farming island that is totally isolated and completely its own animal, by all means, you got to go to Ometepe. It is a unique experience. But if you're trying to evaluate Nicaragua, you can't go like that would be so just wasted time because nothing about Ometepe is going to teach you about Nicaragua. They have different food, weather, electric supply, internet supply, everything. It, it's an isolated island. We shouldn't have to mention that, but it turns out we do. So that we're bringing it up. It's important for you to realize that going to special cases will be special cases. It would be similar to talking about the United States and talking about all the things that people are used to in the U.S. and then going only to a really isolated small island somewhere off Hawaii and being like, oh, I didn't get this American experience. What do you, I, you people are crazy. Well, of course you can go way out of your way and isolate yourself and not get the experience that everyone else has, but you kind of knew you were doing that. Like you can't really think that going to a small, super poor island that's full of expats, especially expats that are hippies, in the middle of a lake that is only accessible by ferry part of the day, that has, has extremely little Nicaraguan population and doesn't have the, the logistics supply of the rest of the country, that it's somehow magically going to be like the rest of the country. This is not like, you know, Scotland or the United States, where a small island could, in theory, have a huge amount of infrastructure flying supplies out there and trying to keep it up to date with the rest of the country. Nicaragua doesn't have those kind of resources. There's no way to get that stuff out there. So the fact that they have electric and internet is amazing enough. That there's ferries that run like every hour is mind-blowing. How do they do that? I have no idea but they do they pull it off and the island is functional and certainly you can consider living out there but if you're going to consider living on Ometepe you really have to think of it as probably being a completely unique experience you wouldn't go anywhere else if Ometepe is what you want just like if San Juan del Sur is the right place for you nowhere else in the country is going to be those are unique places and you need to think of them as their own thing you need to consider do I want to live on Ometepe and not do I want to be in Nicaragua. If you want to be in Nicaragua, you don't want to be in Ometepe. If you want to be in Ometepe, you don't want to be in Nicaragua. However you want to phrase that, it's important thinking. A little bit softer than those two super isolated things is the city of Granada. Now, a lot, a lot of expats who are, or, or potential expats pats who are looking at coming to Nicaragua start their journeys like me in the city of Granada because it does have a tourist infrastructure, but it is a real city. So it's kind of a halfway location. And this totally makes sense for a lot of reasons. And I fell for it too. But I don't think it's a great place to start. If you're coming down for as a tourist, then it's great. It is the place where I would start as a tourist. So if you're starting, you want to get a few days of tourism in before you begin your relocation journey, well, fine, then it is the right place to start. But if you're going to live in a place, I think that Granada gives a skewed view of Nicaragua. My own experience was that we almost didn't move to Nicaragua because of the negatives we experienced in Granada. There aren't huge negatives. It's just it didn't create the feeling that we get in the rest of the country because there were so many expats because it's still a tourist zone in some ways it gave us false hope it had way more food and restaurants and activities to do than most of the country has so it was misleading positive in that direction and it was so full of tourists that everything was super expensive and people always treated us as outsiders and never considered us anything more than the temporary people that we were so it was legitimate but we were never going to be able to get away from that the idea that you are just a passing uh fad and just a a, a brief part of society will always be associated with you. People in Granada are never going to believe that you've become a permanent part of society because that's not what people do there. Now, for some people, being a permanent tourist and being treated that way is absolutely fine. And for some, it may even be what you like. If you're living in an enclave-style lifestyle, which you're definitely going to get in San Juan del Sur, which you get most of the Rivas Coast, anything south of the main uh, uh, 
Wildlife Preserve, or in Granada, it is common for expats to seek this out, then you may not mind at all and you have no desire to integrate with the society and then you're fine. So you do have to have some amount of understanding of yourself of what you're looking for and then gauge which of these places still make sense for you to check out. When you're watching my show, I think people get one feeling, which is that it's very low cost, that it's very safe, that it's very culturally a certain way because nearly everywhere I go on the show is uh, within the traditional Nicaragua. I'm avoiding enclaves, I'm avoiding tourist areas, not so much intentionally as just I live here and this is what life is like. If I go to Granada, I tend to do things outside the tourist zone. So even there, I give a little bit of a different feel than people who generally live there would do. So if you're watching this show, then chances are either you're very clearly not identifying with the places that I show and you're just like, okay, I like watch, watching Scott, but I'm not looking to live in the places that he is, in which case the places I just mentioned may be the right places for you to check out. But if you're watching the show and you enjoy the show, but it also resonates with you that you like the places you're seeing and such, then you can pretty much rule out all these other places because they won't be very similar to what you're seeing here. Granada will have some crossover. You can live in Granada and get a lot of the same feeling as long as you know that you're going to have this oil and water thing for forever and that you're going to be paying much higher prices. Outside of that, the rest of the country, which I realize we just eliminated the majority of the land of the country, but we only eliminated a tiny amount of the population of the country. Maybe one out of seven million people live in the areas that we just mentioned. The other six million all live in a very unified culture. This is the people in Messiah, Managua, uh, 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 most of Rivas that's inland from the beaches, Leon, Chenendega, uh, Madrid, Nueva Segovia, Boaco, Chantales, um, Granada outside of Granada city center, Carrasso, uh, and similar zones, right? You can go all over the Esteli, Hinotega, Matagalpa, uh, all of those zones, basically anywhere in all of that. You have city after city and town after town that all have similar food, culture, music, nightlife, and so you. some are bigger, some are smaller, some are richer, some are poor, some have uh, more of agricultural activities, some have uh, more business activity, some are beach, some are mountains, some are farmland. Those things vary, but the culture and what you're going to be experiencing, it's going to be very similar. So this is important to understand. None of those other areas really have tourist zones. Managua will have little tiny isolated bits, but the rest of the places really don't at all, except for the obvious, like Leon City Center is a very isolated area. Most of the stuff should be obvious, though. We don't have to pick out really specific things. However, every time someone comes in and says they're evaluating one of these cities, you then find out that they went into what little bit of tourist zone that they had and never ventured out into the city. And you're like, what is going on? I really don't understand why it seems so difficult to evaluate cities, but it really is. People do not think through what it takes to evaluate and get stuck in tourist mode. They really think that they're going to live. For example, you're going to move to New York City and you say, oh, I want to evaluate New York City. And they go and stay on Wall Street. I worked on Wall Street. Trust me, nobody lives there. If you found a hotel on Wall Street and stayed there, the experience you would get in New York City would be so different than people who actually live in New York City, right? There's so many people who live in New York City. They have expressions like the city that never sleeps, but on Wall Street, it's hard to get dinner after 6 p.m. That's very confusing and not at all the experience that people are anticipating and not the experience that the average New Yorker even comes close to having. But if you go by tourist spots, you'd end up with some really weird views of New York City. People don't live where the hotels are by and large, in New York, same thing here. If you're surrounded by a bunch of hotels, you're in an area that is probably not right for evaluating being an expat. So there's two aspects to this. One is avoid the areas that don't make sense for you. And again, it's all about knowing what you want to do. If you want to live in a Caribbean island, but you want to be inside Nicaragua, and the only thing you care about are those factors, then yes, the Corn Islands are the absolute perfect thing for you. They're the only choice. So go check them out. But if you're coming because you think you like Nicaraguan culture and the things you see on my videos, then the Corn Islands will be nothing like these. And you shouldn't be realistically wasting your time because you will be there in a vacation mode. Now, if you really need to evaluate lots of different areas because you can't decide, okay, as long as you're not treating them like a tourist. So the first piece is only go to the places where you could reasonably evaluate the thing you want to evaluate, right? If you want to evaluate real Nicaragua, don't go to Ometepe because nothing you're going to experience is going to tell you about what your life in Nicaragua would be like. It's completely misleading because it is its own thing. The only thing you're evaluating is Ometepe. And in many cases, you're only evaluating the place that you went. Like it's so sprawling 
feeling that one part of the island to another could be very, very different. Very different breezes, very different views, very different food just from town to town because there's only a handful of restaurants. So you're evaluating one or two people cooking in, in your time there. So that's important to understand. So evaluate the places that actually make sense that are actually a part of the places you're evaluating. And I, this is the craziest thing to have to explain, but it is so common. It is the norm that when I talk to people who are evaluating Nicaragua, the first thing that they do is go to places that are nothing a part of Nicaragua that they say they're interested in and spend all of their time there. This comes up because someone from the channel literally said they were coming to evaluate Nicaragua, said they were expecting all these things that are just normal that you can get anywhere in Nicaragua that are completely common, very, very easy, and instead went to a really, really tiny village on the island of Ometepe and then only went to local Plate, like didn't shop like a local, didn't look into how to do things, didn't look into, in this case, even getting a hotel with air conditioning, just got one without air conditioning and then complained that people don't have air conditioning. But when I stay on Ometepe, I have no problem finding air conditioning. It's in the hotel listings. They say has AC, just make sure it says that and you're all good. Same as anywhere. I'm very confused about the struggles that people have with evaluating places. Like it's really not that hard. We have AC everywhere here in Nicaragua. It's restaurants generally don't, it's too costly, but hotels, yeah. Yeah, just check to see if they have it. It's very easy, even in places like the Corn Islands or Ometepe, no problem finding AC, but you do have to look for it. If you choose a place without it, you're not going to have it. Um, lots of the houses have it, not the poorest people, but of people who uh, above, minimum wage and above definitely have air conditioning in most cases. Nearly everyone I know has air conditioning, um, at least partially, right? Most people don't air condition their whole house, but they'll air condition like their bedroom at a minimum. Uh, but those, you know, those are things that you could put in. If you're evaluating and you want air conditioning, you'll have air conditioning. So that's not something you really have to test because unless you're just bouncing around from friend's house to friend's house and you're wondering if they will have air conditioning, uh, then think about how that just apply some logic to the things you're evaluating and figure out what makes sense for you. So the first part is avoid spending your time in places that are nothing to do with what you're evaluating. So go to where you're trying to evaluate. And the second thing is don't treat yourself like a tourist, which this takes a little bit of just thought process, but don't hang out in the city centers because that's not where you're going to live realistically. Or if you actually are only interested in evaluating city centers, like be very conscious about that. Is that really logical? Normal people don't live there very often. That's very much the exception. Even for expats, that is not the norm. So does that extra cost, does that extra complexity, does that extra heat, does the extra old buildings, does all that make sense for you? If that's really what you want to evaluate, but for normal people, you want to evaluate real neighborhoods that you might actually live in and get a feel for what your life would be like if you moved here, rather than what if you lived in a poorly chosen hotel in a place you're not really interested in, indefinitely like that's so far the things that we hear from people are so far from evaluating something it would be a little bit like i want you to evaluate chinese cooking and so we're going to go to a portuguese restaurant and not even have dinner we're just going to have wine and then we'll see if you like Chinese food. And you're like, at what point do I evaluate the Chinese food? They're like, well, never. We're just having Portuguese wine. Won't you, won't you figure it out from that? And you're like, what are you talking about? But this is literally what happens. People stay in a hotel, not an apartment. They get a hotel that doesn't reflect what their apartment might be like. Most people can uh, just ignore what the hotel is like because they know they're not evaluating that. But some people can't. So learn these things about yourself. And if you have to go to a place that mimics where you're going to live, then do so. But that's probably a good thing to do anyway, because it's going to give you a much better idea of neighborhoods and lifestyles and what it's really like to get up and live in a Nicaraguan house in the morning, right? Or the kind of house that you're going to live in. If you're going to live in an enclave, test enclave houses, obviously. Uh, go eat at the restaurants you'd actually eat at. And I know this stuff takes more work. Being a tourist is easy. Being a relocation researcher for yourself is work. It's a well, huge, important decision. Put some effort into it please uh it's yeah it's fun and tempting to be a tourist and it's so easy to be like oh we're just gonna have a good time this is fun and you know don't bring your family probably if it's an initial uh scouting trip because what if you don't like it or what if you need to move around or what if they're bored if i took my kids every time i scouted a place that would be problematic because they'd be like well what are we supposed to do they're not taking an interest in those extra things uh they're looking to live their lives so they're going to be in tourist mode because they're kids and so 
so that's not going to work out well because I'm going to be focused on trying to keep them happy while also trying to just figure out how to live a lifestyle. But it's not like you can move in all the things you do. You can't move your office, your, your video game rooms, your movies, your, your cooking utensils, whatever it is that you would do at home on a normal night, you probably can't bring in if you're evaluating for a few weeks. So renting an apartment and trying to imagine is really important. And that's a key to being an expat uh, or, or looking to be an expat is that you need to use your imagination. Do everything you can to physically and mentally put yourself in the right place to have the tools at your disposal to observe what your life could be like. And then you have to imagine, well, what happens if I have friends and we hang out here? What is it like if I go out here two days a week, three days a week, four days a week? If I cooked at home, what would my shopping experience be? Do what you can, go to the supermarkets, try it out, right? But then say, okay, right now I'm learning everything. So that's exciting, but it's also scary. So if this wasn't exciting, but also not scary, would this be a good every everyday shopping experience? Would cooking under these conditions be good? Would be living in this style house be comfortable long term if this is where I really had to set up my furniture and, and move in and make it a home? Try to use that imagination and build your experience uh, virtually and use that to try to determine if you want to take the next step in being an expat in that location. And I know it's a lot of work. I know it's like not as fun as just being a tourist, but we want you to be successful long term. And every time someone comes down and is unhappy with Nicaragua, it's almost guaranteed that it's because weird things were done and either they had no idea what to expect, which shocks me about, you know, it's 84 degrees and people are dying. Like, it's so hot. We're like, it's 84 degrees. I know that's warm, but one, you absolutely knew before you came, and two, it's 84 degrees. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's surprising things. The process of getting people to evaluate can be a difficult one. Um, it is so tempting to do other things. Anyway, I hope that this is useful. I had a number of people have evaluations that I feel that they didn't really give it a fair shake. They may have learned what they needed to know. If you're going to be unhappy and you're just going to be grumpy about it, then it was the wrong place for you, right? That's pretty much a given. But if you're really trying hard to do an honest evaluation and you really want to know how it's going to apply to you, there's a way to do it to be successful in your evaluation. That doesn't mean that it's going to be the place that you like. I don't think in the cases of people I've talked to recently that there was any chance that they were going to like it. It was just the wrong place. But I also feel they could 100% have ruled it out before they came. They didn't need to come and evaluate. That they came and evaluated seems odd because the things that they complained about were very well known, very precisely ahead of time, not surprises. So why were they evaluating a place they had already ruled out? That's the weird part. So, and in both cases I, that I just spoke to today, I don't feel like the evaluation was taken seriously. The things that they were complaining about don't really apply broadly. Um, and, and they kind of set themselves up for, they put themselves in situations that created the problems that they experienced rather than uh, evaluating in, in a, a different way, which would have made it more exposed that the issues that they had were simply that they didn't like it, but there's nothing wrong with that. You don't like this place or whatever, just, hey, I don't like the food here. Oh, I don't like the weather here. I wanted to give it a try just in case the other things overcame that, but it was too much. I still don't like the food and weather. Hey, no harm, no foul. That's fine. Everyone likes different places. And honestly, I don't like the weather either, but you do get used to it. It's not as bad as people like to make it sound, but it is warm. It is, it just is what it is. Hope this is helpful. Hope this gives you some guidance. I just don't want you to guys to, to, you know, flounder around in the relocation process and make terrible decisions because you, you didn't know how to evaluate or weren't thinking about the process of evaluating. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll see all of you tomorrow.